ओम अज्ञान तिमिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकय चक्षुरुन मिलितम येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टं स्थापितम येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा महियम ददाति स्वपदांतिकं वन्देहं श्री गुरो श्री युत पद कमलं श्री गुरुन वैष्णवांश्च श्री रूपं सागर जातं सहगण रघुनाथान्वितं तं सजीवं साद्वैतं सावधूतं परिजन सहितं कृष्ण चैतन्य देवं श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वितांश्च हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुत देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रिय वंशा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगदाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so today we are studying the 6th canto of shrimad bhagavatam uh, i would uh, yeah thank you for the screen share this is canto 6 chapter 5 text 15 <clears throat> tat sanga bhramshitaishwaryam samsarantam kubharyavat tad gatir abudhasyeh किम सत्कर्म भेद तत्संग भ्रंशित ईश्वर्य संसर कुभार्यवत तदगतिरबुद्ध से किम सत्कर्म भेदे तत्संग भ्रंशित ईश्वर्य संसर कुभार्यवत तदगतिरबुद्ध से किम सत्कर्म भेदे Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Translation. Narad Muni had also spoken of a man who is the husband of the prostitute. The Hariyashwas understood this as follows. If one becomes the husband of a prostitute, he loses all independence. Similarly, if a living entity has polluted intelligence, he prolongs his material life. frustrated by material nature he must follow the movements of the intelligence which brings various conditions of happiness and distress if one performs fruit of activities under such conditions what will be the benefit so we will just comment for like 10 seconds and then we will dive into the purport so shila prabhupad is saying here if one becomes the husband of a prostitute he loses all independence so if one is very closely associated to a prostitute who is not loyal and uh, losing all character she uh, goes from person to person place to place thing to thing then the husband is only going to have more headache so similarly our mind is like a prostitute because instead of being loyal to krishna instead of being surrendered to krishna what is the mind and the intelligence doing going from person to person thing to thing object to object event to event circumstance to circumstance so as a result the husband the soul is only getting more and more trouble as krishna says in the bhagavad gita if the mind is controlled then it's the best friend if the husband and wife are together chaste to one another then they will attain krishna <laughs> and there's peace of mind for both but if one of them go astray then it is trouble for both both get contaminated both get frustrated and there is no long lasting everlasting peace so if the mind instead of being loyal to krishna goes from this circumstance to that circumstance this person to that person that event to this event this desire to that desire always moving without any loyalty without any fixity without any steadiness then the mind becomes corrupted the mind becomes polluted the mind becomes agitated and the soul suffers the stay of the soul in this world continues for a long long time so that is exactly what is mentioned here similarly if a living entity has polluted intelligence he prolongs his materialistic life frustrated by material nature he must follow the movements of the intelligence which brings various conditions of happiness and distress and if one is acting under such an impure intelligence and mind what will be the benefit <laughs> there's no joy there's only suffering 
It's a long purport. Let's read through the whole purport and then we will start our discussion. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Polluted intelligence has been compared to a prostitute. One who has not purified his intelligence is said to be controlled by that prostitute. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vyavasayatmika buddhi rekeha kurunandana. Those who are actually serious to get Krishna should be conducted by, by one kind of intelligence. That's called intelligence in Krishna consciousness. Which means those who really want Krishna, they must give their mind and intelligence to Krishna. They must work under Shastra. Hmm? Then the mind becomes, the consciousness becomes purified and very soon the person can go back to Krishna. Otherwise, what happens? Bahu shakha yanantascha buddhayo vyavasayin. One who is not fixed in proper intelligence discovers many modes of life. Thus, involved in material activities, he is exposed to different modes of material nature. What do the different modes of material nature mean? Sometimes one feels like giving charity. Sometimes one feels like stealing. Sometimes one feels like collecting more money. Sometimes one feels like, oh, I am so happy. Sometimes one feels like waking up early. One, sometimes one feels like going off to sleep. Sometimes one feels like criticizing others. The very next moment he feels like, no, no, I should not criticize anyone. <laughs> then next day he says, but till when can I tolerate? I must speak up. If I don't speak up, well, I'm not criticizing. I'm speaking the truth. And then we will justify all our activities. These are the different modes that we work through. Either we are in Sattva Gun, sometimes thinking from today, I will eat simple food. And the very next day in the afternoon, you know, pav bhaji or pizza or, you know, it's too early here in the Eastern time zone to speak these things. But <laughs> nonetheless, uh, the eternal hunger of the soul <laughs> continues. So one time in Sattva Gun, we feel from today, I will eat only Bhagavad Prasad and I will keep it very simple. The very next moment we feel today is the last day from tomorrow. I'm going to be a changed person. And sometimes we are too, too lazy and in Tamogun even to take that call. So, okay, whatever comes like Avadud Brahman, I will accept <laughs> whatever Krishna sends me. So in this way, because of impure intelligence, we are working through different modes. And now we continue in the purport. And we subject, we are subjected to various kinds of so-called happiness and distress. Hmm? We, we must note that when Acharyas speak, every sentence is very deep. Every sentence is very deep. So in a purport, it's not like I just, you know, continue reading, 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 even if I don't understand. We pause and we read line by line and then we think about it. When our spiritual master speaks something, when Srila Prabhupada speaks something, when we read anything that the Acharyas give, every line has weight because they are guru. They are not lagu. <laughs> they are not light. Guru in Sanskrit Laghu and Guru are syllables, basically. Lighter syllables and heavier syllables. So he who is Guru, Jagat Guru, imagine how much weight will be there in every word that he speaks. Hmm. Srila Prabhupada's uh, uh, godbrother, Srila Sridhar Maharaj, once said that um, it takes millions and millions of lifetimes for us to realize the depth of one sentence that the Acharya speaks. Like, for example, if Prabhupada says, there is no pleasure in this world. We may read it, we may hear it, we may even speak it. But the day when we actually realize it, it's hundred lifetimes gone. <laughs> and then we are convinced that there is no pleasure in this world. And there's true pleasure only in the, in the service of Radha and Krishna. So in this way, let's continue reading. If a man becomes the husband of a prostitute, he cannot be happy. And similarly, one who follows the dictation of material intelligence and material consciousness will never be happy. Actually, this sentence is the sum and substance, the summum bonum of the whole purport. And actually, that's the summum bonum of Shastra. Um, if, if we follow the dictation of material intelligence and material consciousness, then we will never be happy. Let's continue reading. One must understand the activities of material nature. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Prakrite Kriya Manani Gunai Karmani Sarvasha Ahankara Vimudhatma Karta Hamiti Manyate. The bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself to be the doer of activities, which in actuality is carried by nature. So we become like uh, puppets 
Sometimes the string of tamogun is pulled and we feel like sleeping two hours in the afternoon. And sometimes the string of rajogun is pulled and we feel like giving back an argument on social media in a comment. <laughs> and sometimes the mode of sattva gun is pulled and we end up deleting WhatsApp. <laughs> And then Rajogun is pulled again and then we reinstall it back at the Apple store. Hare Krishna. Sometimes Sattva Gun is pulled and we wake up early in the morning and we sit down and we chant in front of the deities and we feel so much joy. And sometimes Tamo Gun is pulled. What happens? We are awake up to two o'clock at night watching shorts and reels on YouTube and whatnot. Or talking to people on the phone or watching a movie or watching a soccer game. And then what happens because we have slept late, um, either we will wake up late or we'll wake up early. Either or, it's either Tamagun or Rajagun. If we wake up late, it's Tamagun. And if we wake up early after sleeping late, it's Rajagun because we haven't caught up on the actual amount of sleep that we should. And then we get agitated and uh, we are restless during Japa. And our interactions with others are not the ideal. So we are actually being pulled by material nature. And when we perform activities in those consciousness, we think, well, I woke up early. Well, I overslept. Well, I did this. But Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, if we don't follow him, if we don't follow those scriptures, we are actually being dictated like puppets by the three modes. And they are actually pushing and pulling. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada, in the Markini Bhagavad Dharma, he writes um, that Kashthera Puthali Jatha, Na Chao Se Mate. Dear Krishna, every living entity is being moved like a wooden puppet. But the puppeteer is nature, Prakriti, is Maya. But Krishna, today I loudly and boldly proclaim, I am happy to be a puppet if my puppeteer is you. You make me dance and I will dance. Actually, all of us have to dance. All of us have to move. Either we are controlled by Guru and Gauranga or we are controlled by Maya. Srila Prabhupada was once asked that when we take Diksha, are all our sins destroyed? Uh, Srila Prabhupada said, yes, but the condition is you should be ruled by your spiritual master. <laughs> If we are ruled by our spiritual master, which means if Guru Tattva say in their class, move left, we move left. Even if our heart, even if our intelligence, even if our senses push us right, we move left. Left wing. <laughs> and even if our, uh, if our Shastra says move right, and if our senses move left, we still move right. So we all must surrender. If we are ruled by our spiritual master, only then all our sins are taken away. Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj said, disciple means discipline. Guru Karanadharam. Guru becomes the Karanadhar. He is holding the ear of the disciple. And if the Guru says sit down, means sit down. If the Guru says stand up, means stand up. And Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj would sometimes uh, demonstrate that in the class. And he would say, <laughs> stand up, sit down, stand up and sit down. And the brahmachari would stand up and sit down. And he would say, yes, if you're ruled by your spiritual master, Guru Karanadhar, then Maya cannot touch. Otherwise, we are like stray dogs. We have no master. And then when we don't have a master, Maya loves to rule over us. She becomes the master. And then when she uh, becomes the master and we become her servant, then there's only distress. You can think about it. With fire, you can do so many things. You can cook, right? You can heat up water. You can do so many things for bathing, etc. But with smoke, there's only suffocation. There's only irritation. So the fire is the internal energy, Radharani. It's creativity. It's joy. And smoke is the external energy. Maya, there's only distress. <laughs> So if we take care, if we take shelter of the external energy, there's suffering. And moment to moment, if we take shelter of Radha and Krishna, and then there's joy. So we want to reread that one sentence that Srila Prabhupada makes. Can we move up on the purport, please? Yeah. If a man becomes the husband of a prostitute, please note here the prostitute referred to is the mind. 
which is not fixed at the lotus feet of Krishna, who is our husband, but moving all over the place for joy, then that soul cannot be happy. So the husband here refers to the soul. Cryptic language is being used. Please note, the husband here is the soul. The prostitute here is the mind, which is uncontrolled. So similarly, one who follows the dictation of material mind, intelligence, and consciousness, that person cannot be happy. Okay, let's continue reading. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, although one follows the dictation of material nature, he happily thinks himself the master or husband of material nature. Scientists, for example, try to be masters of material nature, life after life, not caring to understand this supreme person under whose direction everything within this material world is moving. Trying to be masters of material nature, they are imitation gods who declare to the public that scientific advancement will one day be able to avoid so-called control of God. In fact, however, the living being unable to control the rulings of God is forced to associate with the prostitute of polluted intelligence and accept various material bodies. How merciful is this section? This is amazing, really amazing. Because if you see scientific development, again, nothing wrong against science. Science is wonderful. Jnana and Vidyana are actually the energies of the Supreme Lord. This laptop is scientific. This internet is scientific. This uh, Veda base uh, is scientific. This microphone is scientific. So we are not against science. Uh, but what we are against is when scientists, and Srila Prabhupada speaks about it, when scientists say two things, the origin of life and the origin of this world. The origin of life comes from chemicals put together, atoms and molecules, no soul and no super soul and no God, right? It's just chemical compositions coming together and uh, from, from matter comes life. When science, scientific uh, minded people speak like this, what actually happens is that if you believe that, then you're taking the concept of soul away, right? And when you take the concept of soul away, you think I am this, I am this. And when you think I am this, then you want to keep this good. And one is completely drowned in material consciousness, completely drowned. But if you think about the soul concept, then we understand, well, this body has to be left behind and what comes through the body is not mine. The soul has to go ahead and reach Krishna. So you see the whole mechanism of thought changes. Another thing, the origin of this world. If you understand that there is a supreme being who has created and who is Upadrishta, Anumanta, Bharta, Bhokta, Maheshwara, as Krishna says, I am the, the overseeing superior. <clears throat> when we understand Krishna is watching us, then when we do something good, we are happy. And when we do something bad, we break regulative principle, we break the injunctions of the Shastra. Uh, then when, then we, we know that, you know, well, I have to pay a price. <laughs> but when we take that controller away, when we take that overseer away, I can do whatever I want. And there's nobody to control me. So the person becomes reckless. And without any binding, without any news, becomes like an uh, uncontrolled animal. So he doesn't think he's the soul. He, he's convinced he's the body. And he's taken the super soul away, which means there's no next birth, which means there's no suffering. You can eat meat and you're not going to become an animal. You can skin animals alive and create leather. And there's no problem, absolutely. I am not answerable to anyone. I can pollute any boy, any girl, I can enjoy anything in this world. I can dump any intoxicant into my body. It doesn't matter. Don't let others tell you what to do. Follow your mind. And then there are motivational speakers who speak like that. Do what your mind says. Well, the mind is corrupted. <laughs> the mind is polluted. The mind is taking us all over the place. So this is why Srila Prabhupada talks so heavily against atheistic scientific people, not against science in general. Sripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj was a PhD in physical organic chemistry from Irvine University, California. University of California at Irvine, right? And, and this was back in the 70s. He had a PhD. And he told Srila Prabhupada, can I just leave this and... Um, study Srimad Bhagavatam because I heard in your class there's no need to be <laughs> a scientist. Srimad Bhagavatam is the greatest science. Prabhupada said, no, I said that for others, not for you. You finish your PhD. 
and you help me break the teeth of the atheistic scientists. Hare Krishna. And then <laughs> we can see Sri Pad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj all his life with a sannyas, spiritually as a sannyasi, and materially with so many publications, so many research, contacts with so many scientists. He would meet scientists. So he was like the best Vaigyanic Rishi. He was a Rishi as a, as a sannyasi, and he was uh, completely scientific with a PhD. So when scientists spoke to him, they saw a PhD there. They saw a, a doctorate in physical organic chemistry, and he would have discussions with them and bring them to the point through conversations and making them convinced, at least surrender to the point that God exists. <laughs> And then Shripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj published so many books. In fact, actually one book, The Scientific Basis of Krishna Consciousness, was published in the presence of Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada was so proud. And in the classes, Prabhupada would say, like my Swarup Damodar, <clears throat> he can defeat all the scientists. <laughs> and it's quite fascinating. When uh, Shripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj came to Srila Prabhupada, Taudam Damodar Singh was his name. He was got by another boy whose name was Rao. So Taudam Damodar Singh and Rao, they came to Srila Prabhupada and got initiated at the same time. And Rao was initiated as Ramananda Rai. And Singh was initiated as Swarup Damodar, the two confidential servants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> and just like Swarup Damodar Goswami was there with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even at the Gambhira, holding his hand, Sripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj was there with Srila Prabhupada, even in his final days, holding his hand, massaging his lotus feet, giving him a head massage. And Srila Prabhupada, even at that time, spoke to Sripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj, saying, my time, my generation is over. The next phase is yours. Because the whole world is turning scientific. So with the basis of sannyas, with the basis of Shastra, with the basis of Bhagavatam, Make the atheistic people understand that God exists. At least bring them to the point that there is a superpower. If not believe Krishna exists, at least come to the point that there is an overseer. So Sripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj published books with very wonderful slogans, with very wonderful conversations. They're all available and the topics are wonderful. It's like Vedanta and embryology, for example. <laughs> uh, Roger Penrose, who was... Uh, I believe the Rose Ball professor at Oxford for the Department of Mathematics um, <clears throat> and quantum physics also, other conversations. Sripad Bhakti Swarup Damodar Maharaj had discussions on how um, God is an intelligent designer, thinking about the speed of light, thinking about, uh, uh, let's say, the distance between the earth and the sun. If it was maybe a little closer, the earth would have been burnt. And if a little farther, we would have been frozen. So who is the one who comes with this perfect intelligent design, this fine tuning? The speed of light is perfect. <laughs> the temperature on earth, the temperature on the sun, the distance, the radius, the rotation, the revolution speed, everything is so wonderfully designed. There's nothing that falls off its orbit. <laughs> who is the one? Or how is it possible through a bang, all of this is created and it continues to exist. It's not, you never hear there was a bomb blast at this railway station and a new platform was created. You will never hear something like that. It sounds funny, right? <laughs> there was a bomb blast somewhere and a new airport was created. Now, that sounds funny, but scientifically, the scientists prove that there is a big blast and everything came into existence and everything is floating from all times to come. So what's actually happening is you want to enjoy Krishna's property. You want to enjoy Krishna's world. You want to enjoy Krishna's resources and kick Krishna out of the window. Now that's horrible. A child who wants to live in the home and kick the parents out can never be happy. Can never be happy. Instead, understand that this belongs to the parents. And we are actually blessed and grateful for what they have given us and love and serve them 
and then share the resources. That's happy life. So that's exactly what Prabhupada is saying. Let's read this point of the purport again. Although one follows the dictation of material nature, which means our mind, he happily thinks himself the master or husband of material nature. Everyone in this world is moving helplessly by their mind. The mind is saying, do this. I want shoes at one point. Then the person goes shopping online on Amazon looking for shoes. And the other point, the child says, I want an ice cream. And then you take the child to Baskin Robbins and get an ice cream. And then while coming back, the older son may say, oh, look, dad, I want toys. Actually, we as the soul, we don't want anything except Radha and Krishna. We don't want anything except Vrindavan. As the soul, we want only Radha, Krishna, Seva, Pabo, E, Abhilashi. But it is the mind which wants all this. The mind wants the ice cream. The, the mind wants the shoes. The mind wants a comfortable bed. The mind wants to watch movies. The mind wants a newer car. But how do we speak? We don't say my mind wants it. I want it. Why? Because we have become tadatma. We have become one with the mind. If the mind says, I want ice cream, we say, I want ice cream. If the mind says, I want shoes, we say, I want shoes. It's not us. It's the mind. And the mind is flickering. It's fleeting. It's moving like the waves on the ocean. So if you follow the dictation of the mind, we're going to be helpless. We're going to be miserable. Today, I want 1 lakh rupees. Tomorrow, I want 10 lakh rupees. Then I want 100 lakh, 1 crore. Then I want 10 crores. Then I want to steal a bank. <laughs> we may think, well, I will never steal a bank. Those who stole a bank never ever thought they will steal a bank. Those who shot people dead never at one point in their life thought that they would shoot anybody. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even think they would lift up or pick up a gun. Those who started to drink and smoke never at one point thought they would drink and smoke. The mind gets in as a needle and comes out as a plow. It's just one thing at a time. Just watch a little snippet. Just watch a little video. And then that 15 minutes becomes 20 minutes. The 20 becomes 25. And in no time, there are people who are addicted hours on their cell phone watching things which are killing their time. <laughs> Just little video, just little entertainment, just little indulgence, just one secret, just whatever, one glass. What, what do you call for, for liquor? Whatever you call it, a little, little sip. <laughs> yeah. And then in no time, it's one sip every three days. And then it's one sip every two days and just occasional sips. And then finding friends who also occasionally sip. And then sitting with them in that sangha. And then in no time, they're drunkards. And the mind has destroyed the person. So the mind is actually a sabotager. You know what sabotaging means? Sabot a, a sabotager is someone who proves to us they're actually on our side. And they're only purpose is to destroy us. Like imagine if there is someone, let's say India and Pakistan, let's say, for example, are having a Kargil war or something, you know. And if there's someone from India or someone from Pakistan crossing over the other side and acting as if they are actually that side, someone from India going to Pakistan, acting as if they're a Pakistani, someone from Pakistan coming to India and actually acting as if they're an Indian, but their only purpose is to be a spy, take all the details out and destroy the camp. That's what a mind does. We think our enemies are outside. We think my brother is not favorable. My wife is not favorable. My children are not favorable. My, my spouse is not favorable. My parents are not favorable. We think like that. But trust me, those decisions are made by the mind who is our worst enemy. He is the enemy sitting inside, pointing fingers at others and destroying us further, making us fall to uh, fault finding, blasphemy, criticism, and makes our life a bigger hell. So we have to spot that the enemy is not outside. The enemy is within. And we'll speak more. Let's read through the remaining part of the purport and then we'll speak more about the mind being the sabotager. 
So, although one follows the dictation, yes, we read that. Scientists, for example, try to be the masters of material nature, life after life not caring to understand the Supreme Person under whose direction everything within this material world is moving, trying to be masters of material nature. They are imitation gods who declare to the public that scientific advancement will one day be able to avoid the so-called control of God. It's never happened. It's never happened. Um, um, Warner Eisenberg, who gave the uncertainty principle in science, he very famously remarked, when you take your first sip from the glass of science, you're convinced there is no God. But as you keep sipping on that glass, in the bottom of that glass, you see God waiting for you with open arms to embrace. I repeat, when you sip the first sip from the glass of science, you're convinced that there is no God. But as you keep sipping, you see on the bottom of the glass, not glasses, but a cup, a glass. God waiting for you with open arms to embrace. When Max Bone, one of the fathers of the atomic theory, was interviewed, he said, in the atom, I saw the greatness of the creator and the creation. There's a point that we can go with science beyond which we say, well, that, that's all I can do. Even doctors, that's all that I can do. Now you pray. <laughs> There's a, there's a level till where human intervention can continue. After that, it's paraprakriti. After that, it's the divinity. What can we say? Because it gets subtler and subtler and subtler. <laughs> um, even Einstein, even uh, Sir Isaac Newton, so many of them, even Max Planck, the father of the quantum mechanics theory, quantum physics, so many of them, um, have agreed and attributed to a superpower. To a superpower. <clears throat> In fact, however, the living being unable to control the rulings of God is forced to associate with the prostitute of polluted intelligence and accept various bodies. Why accept various bodies? Because with this corrupted mind, we will do so many activities. Some of, there are, some of them are good, some of them are bad. Some of them are favorable to Shastra. Some of them are not. So as a result, now you get some punya for following, accidentally following Shastra. And you get some papa. Punya means pious activities and papa means sin. And we have to bear both reactions. We have to suffer for them. Either enjoy or suffer. And for that, you need a body. <laughs> so there's another body that is created. And there you enjoy the pious activities and you suffer for the, the, the sins. Because they are material activities, for any pious material activity, there will be joy. And because it's a material sin, for any sin, there will be material suffering. And because it's material joy or material suffering, you need a material body. And in this way, Prabhupada says, one continues to accept various material bodies. And there is no liberation. Sometimes like a dog, sometimes like a bird, sometimes like a tree, sometimes like a demigod, sometimes like a human. But there's no way out without taking shelter of Krishna. Um, it is described in the Shastra that Muktim Pradata Sarvesham Vishnu Revana Samshaya. Mukti only the Supreme Lord Shri Hari can give. But for that you have to do bhajan. For that you have to have faith. For that you have to follow Shastra. For that the mind has to be controlled. <laughs> As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Purushaha Prakriti Stohi Bhungte Prakriti Jan Gunan Karanam Guna Sanghasya Sadasad Yoni Janmasu. The living entity. So whatever we have discussed, that's the essence. That we see the essence of that is found in this verse of the Gita. The living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil amongst various species. If one fully engages in temporary fruitive activity, what does fruitive activity mean? Fruitive activity means those activities that we perform with a desire of a fruit. Fruit means some desire. Kuch prapti ke liye hum karte na, karane na vina karyam na kadachana vidyate. Shastra says without a karan, without a reason, no activity is performed. Even if you have to walk to a pharmaceutical you know, like a pharmacy store, there is a purpose why we do that. 
right? If we stop at the traffic lights, there is a purpose why we do that. If we put on our wristwatch, there is a purpose why we do that. So, karanena vina karyam na kadachana vidyate. Nobody ever does any activity without a reason. And when the mind is corrupted and polluted, the reasons are also erratic. The reasons are also faltu, as they say in Hindi. This is baseless. <laughs> and then when we follow them, the activities are also, you know, not high class. And those are called fruit of temporary activities. And they don't solve the real problem. What profit will he gain? End of purport. Such a wonderful purport, right? If you actually think about it, this one purport can save us from repeated birth and death. One purport. So actually the mind is a sabotager. The, the mind destroys us when it's uh, contaminated, when it's not uh, purified, the mind destroys us. And we can give a couple of examples for that. Think about Duryodhan. Think about Duryodhan on one side and Yudhishthir Maharaj on the other. Now, if we ask, what do we want to become? Do you want to become Duryodhan or do you want to become Yudhishthir? Everyone will say, yes, yes, I want to become Yudhishthir. But if you see the life of Duryodhan, the life of Yudhishthir Maharaj, Everything that we work hard for in this life, everything that we aspire for in this life, Duryodhan had it. Duryodhan had money. Duryodhan had good clothes. He had good food. He had good prestigious position in society with a lot of people serving him, ministers fanning him, you know, subjects saluting him. He had everything. But still we say he was a wicked person. Why? Yudhishthir Maharaj had nothing. No proper clothes. <laughs> no proper home. He is banished into the forest. Exile. Incognito. Houses set on fire. Children are attacked with deadly weapons. Brother Bhimsen has administered poison. Wife Draupadi is almost disrobed in mid-assembly. Uh, older brother Karna is led to flow. By the mother at childbirth in a basket. What is that thing that Yudhishthir Maharaj did not suffer? But still we consider him to be the best. And we consider Duryodhan to be the worst. Why? When we think about it, there's only one reason why. Duryodhan had controlled everything around him. But he failed to control one thing. That is his mind. And his mind made a big fool of him. <laughs> He was not, not a Maharaj. He was a Raja. Raja means those who control all other directions outside. They can fight and defeat territories outside. But our spiritual masters, we say Maharaj. Right? Swami Maharaj. Uh, we say A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. Why? Our spiritual masters are called Maharaj, not Raja. Raja are those who control directions outside. But Maharaj are those who are ready to control the environment within. They have defeated the mind. <laughs> they have defeated the mind. One time Alexander the Great, he came to one place to have darshan of a sadhu. And uh, because he was aristocratic, he didn't go into the hermitage of the sadhu. He sent his minister. He said, go and tell that sadhu that I have come. So the minister went inside the hermitage of the sadhu and said, um, the great Alexander is here. The sadhu said, the great who? <laughs> the minister said, uh, Alexander the great? He's here. The sadhu said, well, go and tell him I'm busy. The sadhu was sitting meditating. Go and tell him I'm busy. So the minister came out and told Alexander the great, the sadhu said he cannot see you because he is busy. Alexander the Great said, busy for me? Does he know who I am? The minister said, well, I said, and he said, Alexander who? Alexander got so offended by that, that he got off his horse and went into the hermitage of the sadhu himself and picked up the sword and kept it on the neck of the sadhu and said, do you know who I am? The sadhu said, well, you're the servant of my servant. <laughs> Alexander became furious. He said, I give you 10 seconds to explain yourself. 
If not, your head is going to be chopped off. The sadhu said, very simple. My servant is the mind. And that mind is your master. So you are the servant of my servant. I control my mind. But your mind controls you. You're moving by the dictations of your mind. But my mind moves according to my dictation. If, my mind te if I tell my mind, sit down and listen to chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamudra. My mind does it. But your mind will not do it. The sadhu told <laughs> Alexander. Therefore, you are the servant of my servant. Alexander put his sword aside and fell flat on the ground and said, thank you for opening my eyes. <laughs> so Duryodhan was like this. He had... He was a Raja, but not a Maharaja. He had controlled all directions, but not his mind. And therefore, he was miserable. Really miserable. Uh, sometimes some orators on the Mahabharata, they even joke that Duryodhan, sometimes when the sun used to be scorching hot, the servants would keep an umbrella over Duryodhan's head. And Duryodhan would not like it. And the servants would say, Oh, king, we are doing this to protect you from the rays of the sun. And Duryodhan would say, No, 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 no. There cannot be anyone or anything above me, not even an umbrella. <laughs> right. That was the level of how uncontrolled his mind was. And therefore, that made a mess out of his whole life. Duryodhan could have lived happily with the Pandavas, is it not? But how much sin and how much unnecessary complication he got involved into. But on the other hand, you can see Yudhishthir Maharaj. He was, his mind was flowing like the Ganga. Any rock that came was flowing around. The mind was always comfortable because that mind was at the lotus feet of Krishna. Jobai Krishna Charanamana Arpita Tokari Aikai Navagrahanang. In Braj Bhasha, it is said if the mind is <laughs> at the lotus feet of Krishna, then what is the worry? Where is the worry? But on the other hand, if the mind govinda chadi brahmata dasho dashi to kari hai kahi navagraharang. If it is described, if the mind gives up Krishna and tries to be masters in this world, then wherever he goes, he will be suffering. On the other hand, if the mind accepts the lotus feet of Krishna, however difficult the circumstances, he will only be victorious. That's what the Mahabharata fundamentally teaches us in one line. To control the mind. If not, we will become like Duryodhan. If we do, we will be like Yudhishthir Maharaj. Under all painful reversal circumstances, Yudhishthir Maharaj held true to the principles of Dharma. Because his mind was at the lotus feet of Krishna. We can see this even from the Ramayana. Think about Dasharat Maharaj. And think about Ravana. Another name for Ravana is Dashamukha. So on one hand, we have Dasharatha. On the other hand, we have Dashamukha. <laughs> Dasharatha ruled Ayodhya. Dashamukha ruled over Lanka. What is the difference? Ravana, he had Dashamukha. He had ten heads looking outside. Those represent the ten senses. Five Karmendriyas and five Gyanendriyas. We have the five Gyanendriyas, the five senses through which we get Gyan. Eyes, Tell us the form, ears tell us the sound, nose the smell, tongue the taste, and skin the temperature, the touch. So these are called Gyanindriya. Similarly, we have five Karmaindriyas, five senses through which we do activities, like the hands, legs, the private parts, the throat, etc. So we have ten senses. If these ten senses are not controlled, and they are saying, here there is some pleasure, let me smell this perfume. Let me watch this movie. Let me eat this sweet. Right? Let me have this woolen blanket. If the senses dictate and we run in 10 di different directions, then that is like the 10 heads of Ravana coming outside, looking for joy. Yasyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinchane sarvai gunais tatra samasate sura harav abhaktasya kuto mahat guna mano rathe nasati dhavato bahi. Bhagavatam says, Dhavato Bahi, Manorathena, sitting on the chariot of the mind. Manorath. The senses, Dhavato Bahi, are running outside for pleasure. And if this happens, what will be the situation? Ravana had everything. 
he had good clothes he had good food he has suvarna lanka a whole palace made out of gold still he went in duplicity becoming a sadhu to steal the wife of shri ram why only one reason uncontrolled mind and then that burnt the whole of lanka and burnt all his good fortune just the tip of the tail of hanuman is enough to give the reactions to a fool like ravana dashamukha and on the other hand we have dasharatha what does dasharatha mean ratha means chariot but it also means senses so he could either move his chariot in 10 directions or he on his chariot could fight 10 other chariots or he had controlled all his 10 senses who were like chariots and anybody who controls his 10 chariots 10 senses the mind especially what happens ayodhya there is no yuddha in their life there is no struggle and they live in the city of peace and when that happens what 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 will happen in our life even the supreme lord is ready to appear as your child <laughs> hare krishna shri ramachandra bhagavan ki jai so if the mind is controlled you can see yudhishthir maharaj you can see dasharath maharaj and if the mind is uncontrolled you can see duryodhan in the mahabharat and ravana in the ramayana if the mind is controlled properly then the example given is like having an umbrella on a rainy day it's raining it's pouring everyone's getting wet but you're not getting wet <laughs> we can't stop the rain but we can pull up an umbrella and by that what happens we are protected so circumstance in our life what happens to us in our life are like, are like raindrops we can't stop when there's a flood in mumbai you can't <laughs> we can't block the clouds when our prarabdha our reactions come we can't there's no way we can reverse them we can't stop them but then by having an umbrella over us even if it's raining distress we are not touched by it why because the umbrella of the mind is at the lotus of krishna's feet krishna's protecting us instead of seeing it as a problem you will see it as krishna's blessing you will see it as an opportunity to follow shastra however difficult the circumstance may be our vision will change drishti se srishti banti hai na drishti just by our vision the world changes in the most painful circumstance in the most uh, difficult circumstance the person will seek courage and inspiration from the lives of our acharyas and see it as an opportunity thank you krishna you have given me an opportunity now to sincerely follow the instructions of my guru maharaj so one doesn't see problems at all one sees opportunities one sees situations as krishna's blessings another example that can be given is imagine walking a path full of stones but fortunately you have shoes on does it matter how many stones are there doesn't matter you can even run on that path because you're wearing shoes you're wearing shoes so if the mind is controlled if the mind is at the lotus feet of krishna and if you have krishna consciousness if the intelligence is purified then it's like wearing strong shoes and how much ever how many ever stones come on our path you can actually run on them without getting hurt <laughs> because any problem that comes in our life we can overcome because now we are having the shoes the controlled mind at the lotus feet of krishna but for that what do we have to do we have to chant very sincerely we have to read shastra very sincerely we should be under the discipline of a superior vaishnav and we should not criticize anybody when someone is doing something good they are teaching us what should be done and if someone is doing something bad they are teaching us what not to do on the path of bhakti so they are all gurus we don't have to follow their example but they are gurus by personal those who teach us by personal example are called acharyas is it not so those who by personal example teach us the good things they are the heroes and then those who teach us by personal example what not to be done they are the anti heroes so you have the heroes and you have the anti heroes you have the heroes who teach us what to do and you have the anti heroes who teach us what not to do 
एंड इन दिस वे वी आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम एवरी वन वी डोंट क्रिटिसाइज एनी वन देखो वो माता जी ने ऐसे कहा देखो वो प्रभु जी ऐसा कर रहे हैं नहीं वो माता जी ने ऐसे कहा मुझे बता रही है कि मैं ऐसे अगर करूंगा या करूंगी तो मेरा पतन होगा She is teaching me through example. He is teaching me through example that if I do this, then I will go astray on the path of bhakti. Therefore, thank you, Krishna. Life is too short for us to commit all the sins and learn from all of them, to make all the mistakes and then learn from all of them. Life is too short. So, therefore, Krishna is very kind. He is making different people do so many mistakes. so that when we are walking on the journey of life if we just keep our eyes and ears open we can learn from people around us what should not be done <laughs> to get krishna so everything is nice to control the mind which is called mana we need a mantra <laughs> mantra means that which frees the mind from all obstruction <clears throat> but if we don't do that if we don't chant a mantra the hari krishna maha mantra then what happens it's like having stones inside the shoe think about having stones inside the shoe wherever you walk however nice the road is you're going to complain <laughs> that's an uncontrolled mind the most wonderful red carpet entry you give rose petals the whole path is filled with lotus and rose petals you will still complain because the mind is corrupted the mind is polluted and that's like having stones inside the shoe so therefore a temple in sanskrit is called mandira mandira it's the hospital for the contaminated mind just like you have hospitals in this world to cure the body you need a hospital to purify the mind in in modern medicine you can subdue the mind you can calm the mind by giving pills but you can purify the mind if someone has hyperactivity is too erratic and sometimes even psychiatric then the doctors can give some prescription by which the person will become a little calm the mind can be made calm but the mind cannot be purified So let's put it like this in poetry the mind can the mind can be made calm but the mind cannot be purified of calm material desire <laughs> through modern medicine for that you need the hospital which does it and therefore in sanskrit the temple is called mandira it's the hospital for purifying the mind and where maha mantra is chanted by repeating the mantra hare krishna maha mantra by chanting with our tongue and hearing attentively the syllables mind chahe kahan bhage even if the mind is running all over the place no problem try to sit and chant nicely the mind is purified through mantra the intelligence is purified through shastra when you study shastra when you memorize verses when you hear krishna katha intelligence becomes sharp viveka buddhi becomes sharp the mind is purified through mantra the intelligence the buddhi is purified through shastra senses are purified through prasad and ego false ego is purified by serving the vaishnavas hari krishna if we don't serve the vaishnavas we will continue to be i am this i am that i am so great the pride will continue so mind is purified through mantra hare krishna maha mantra and japa and kirtan intelligence is purified by studying shastra reading prabhupada's books and studying senses are purified by only accepting krishna prasad bhagavat maha prasad and false ego is purified by humbly serving the vishnuvas if we follow this principle then we can see that life becomes very blissful every single day is a festival भावोत्सवेन भजतामस काम धेनु इट्स द फेस्टिवल ऑफ भाव तदव रम्यम रुचिम नवम नवम तदव शाश्वत मनसो महोत्सव फेस्टिविटी इफ नॉट इट इज सफरिंग सो देर फोर इफ द माइंड इज अन कंट्रोल्ड इन वन लाइन वी कंक्लूड इफ द माइंड इज अन कंट्रोल्ड वी कैन मेक हेल आउट ऑफ हेवन एंड इफ द माइंड इज ब्यूटिफुली एंगेज इन कृष्ण सर्विस 
न नाक पृष्ठम न च पारमेष्टम न सार्वभौम न रसाधिपत्यम माय लॉर्ड इवन इफ आई एम इन हेल इफ आई एम रिमेम्बरिंग यू स्वर्ग अपवर्ग नरकेशु अपितुल्यार्थ दर्शनम आई एम ब्लिसफुल सो कंट्रोल माइंड कैन मेक इवन हेल नॉट इनटू हेवन बट इनटू वैकुंठ गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बो हरे कृष्णा